Setting up SMB network shares for use in a local area network or LAN is likely your best bet if your network consists of Windows and Mac OS computers. Both platforms can connect to SMB shares with no added software and to set up the SMB file service and create shared folders on a Synology NAS is simple and straightforward. In this video, we'll enable the SMB file service in the Station Manager or DSM. I'll go over why the SMB file service is the best choice in a Windows and Mac OS network. Lastly, we'll plan and then create shared folders, working through some examples that will hopefully help you find the right setup for your LAN. If you are following along in the Synology NAS installation and local area network setup series, setting up SMB network shares on a Synology NAS is the fourth step in the seven video series. The SMB file service should be enabled by default, but to make sure, let's log in to DSM, then go to Control Panel, File Services, and under the SMB, AFP, and NFS tab, make sure the box to enable the SMB service is checked. While here, let's look at the other file services available in this window, which are AFP and NFS. I'll talk briefly about each one and why I would not recommend using either in a LAN made up of Windows and Mac OS computers. Let's scroll down to the AFP section. AFP, or Apple Filing Protocol, is a possible file service to use in a LAN. However, it isn't a compatible protocol for Windows computers, so it isn't a great choice in our setup. While it is still possible to use AFP on Mac OS computers, I'd opt for a protocol that is compatible on both platforms, so I'll uncheck the box that enables the AFP service. Scrolling down further, we see the NFS, or Network File System, section. Linux environments tend to use NFS, and although it is possible to use NFS on both Windows and Mac OS systems, I find integration on those platforms require a little more tweaking and fine-tuning, while SMB tends to work well out of the box. We see that NFS is not enabled by default and we'll leave things as is. I'll finish up by clicking apply to complete the setup of file services on the Synology NAS. In this section, I'll present a few shared folder ideas focusing on an office environment to hopefully help you decide what set of folders will work best in your network. I'll then take those shared folder ideas and create them in DSM building out a set of folders to use as examples in the rest of this video series. We'll need to keep in mind that users or groups are assigned permissions to access shared folders, and the permissions that are available to assign to those users or groups are read-write, read-only, or no access. With that bit of background, we'll start by setting up a shared folder that everyone on the network can access and share files publicly with each other. I'll call this folder shared and all users will have full read-write access to it. The next type of shared folder to create is one where some users have read-write access, but other users have only read access. In an office environment, it could be where managers have read-write access to an employee policies shared folder, so they can adjust policies as needed, but regular employees can only read those files. The last type of shared folder would be where only specific users have read-write access and all other users have no access. Files that only management should have access to, like budgets or salary information, fall into this category, and setting up a confidential shared folder would work great in this situation. Now that we know what types of shared folders to consider creating, I'll run through the steps of setting up the folders that I mentioned previously within DSM. I'll go to Control Panel, Shared Folder, and click on the Create option to start the Shared Folder Creation Wizard. I'll start by creating the Shared Folder that will be accessible by everyone by entering Shared for the name and add a description of Public Shared Folder. For location, I only have one volume, so I'll leave it as is and leave the remaining options unchanged and click Next. I'm not going to encrypt the Shared Folder in this example, so I'll click Next. I'll check the box to enable data checksum for advanced data integrity to take advantage of this feature and leave the remaining options as is and click Next. Finally, I'll confirm that all settings look fine and click Apply. 
For permissions, I'll just click OK because we'll be setting permissions when creating users. I'm done setting up the first shared folder and we'll run through the steps again to create the employee policies and confidential shared folders. I'll create these shared folders with similar settings as the first, so I'll speed up the video for the setup of these remaining folders. At this point, we're done with step four in the Synology NAS installation and local area network setup series and have shared folders in place on the NAS. In the next and fifth video in the series, we'll set up users and assign them permissions so they can access the shared folders. Look for the link to that video and all other videos in the series in the description below, which will be added as they become available. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to like it, and also consider subscribing, which will really help this channel grow.